Okay, so I am going to talk about how to become a politician. And so um, I'm going to have three tips here for you to find out a little bit more about how you can become involved. Just get involved in politics. Just start. Just go ahead and, you know, get involved and if there is you know, just a way for you to find out for find out about vacancies on boards and commissions and, you know, if there are neighborhood associations, join those and start attending. Um, if there are nonprofit organizations that have to do with community development in your area, get involved there um, and start, you know, showing up and you know, letting your voice be heard. And if there is a problem that exists in your, your community, instead of complaining about it, get involved, show up, ask questions, get inquisitive. That way you can learn more about the process and you can really feel like you're actually making a difference. And it just, it lights you up inside and you just feel like you're you're really uh, contributing to, to your community and to society. Um, and this is something, I have a few examples about friends who've actually done some of these things. Where, um, number two, uh, I think it's be the change you seek to find in in your community or wherever it is that you seek to, you know, be in a, a position of, you know, some sort of elected position or appointed position, um, whatever that is, you know, you be the change. You can be the change there. I have some examples of um, a friend of mine I went to high school with. You know, he would say he was so tired of having these, you know, Facebook debates and, you know, people arguing with each other and he really wanted to get involved and make a difference. And he said, um, it was one year, it's like, I'm running for office. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Thank goodness you're going to do that because I, I see you as a natural leader. But he kind of messaged me and he's just like, wait a minute, how do I do this? Ernestine, um, you're involved in politics and how do I do this? So um, I looked and I noticed that, that in his community there was actually a um, vacancy on a board and he's a musician. There's a vacancy on an arts commission. And I said, hey, you should apply for this because you know it has to do with something you're passionate about. So my recommendation is to find whatever the boards and commissions are, you're not really going to feel that you're actually doing anything if you don't have passion or you know actually some sort of interest in the thing that they're doing. So um, with my friend, he had an interest in art. He had a passion in performance and, you know, so this arts commission wasn't just for crafts or murals or, you know, um, you know, kind of some of those, those, it was more all kinds of arts. It was for everything. It was for, you know, they had concerts in the park for, for musicians and, you know, things like that. And I just felt like it was a perfect fit. So I think in some ways he did find his perfect fit. Another friend reached out to me um, saying that he wanted to run for, you know, state rep in his area. So, um, he wanted to be the change that he sought to find, you know, there was a traumatic thing that happened to him and he wanted to be able to be that voice for change so that other people didn't have to go through that. And so um, he started getting involved in re really being out there in the community, having community cleanups and, you know, all organizing all kinds of, you know, events for, you know, people to come together and to to really feel invigorated like they're part of the community. Um, and I was really actually excited to see that, you know, he was really, really making a difference. Um, and another friend, she ran for a county commissioner position and I was just super excited to see that, you know, she was organizing, you know, diaper drives, especially at the height of the pandemic, diaper drives, food drives, you know, just, just out there getting resources to people in the communities that she served um, who really needed these things and who were really looking for some source of security and some source of, you know, certainty when we were facing uncertain times. And I really think that, you know, she was just out there rocking things out of the park it was just amazing to see so i would have to say like if you see something that doesn't exist whether it's like i want to see more businesses here i want to bring a coffee shop to this community or i think we need to have more community cleanups or we need to patronize the arts more so create that change and be that change so that would be so number one was just start um, start getting involved start looking at where you fit in and then two creating those systems of you know okay I found my thing now so now here's what I'm gonna do and you you do that just do it I think the third thing is to 
learn. Realize and kind of recognize that uh, every time isn't going to be, you know, you're not going to win every time. And, you know, first time I ran for office, overestimated how I kind of overest underestimated the amount of work that that needed to go into this campaign and you know I learned a lot about what I needed to do for the next go round. I recognized that my campaign flyers and here's an interesting story it's like um there's a guy who's now elected and at the time he was running and you know he had run a few campaigns so he was he was certain and, and poised and you know, he, he looked at my flyer and he was just like, oh, and you could tell it's just like, what was this? Looking at the thing, it was it was super paper flimsy and thin and he just kind of wrote all over it and he said like, you don't have endorsements, you don't have anything about your education, you don't have anything about your background, you don't have a platform as to what you're running for. Um, no, no, no kind of, there was no substance and he kind of pointed it all out. and. A, he pretty much was just like you're gonna lose and I did lose so um, so it's important to to know um, you know to learn things try it you're not gonna win every time you're and then go back to the drawing board and don't give up so re-strategize and learn from your mistakes so then next time it came for I came up for something I recognized I needed to have a platform so I ran on a platform of things that were really important to me I and it was three bullet points I wanted to incentivize doing business in um, my community I wanted to you know bolster the tax base by bringing in some of those businesses and really being active about recruiting or creating or cultivating or incubating businesses and then you know kind of creating unity through having a lot more community facing conversations and events and things that can really bring people together and look at themselves as you know members of a collective whole and just kind of feel this kinship that I felt in some ways was missing so that those three things I felt that there were strong messages for what we needed I still think that those are super important you know, I'm committed to those three and that was something that was lacking in the first time you know I ran for anything it was actually a matter of fact second time I ran for something I didn't get that either and I'm not sure that those points were coming across as strongly as they eventually did when I became successfully elected to a position so um, that would be my advice you know making sure that you are learning from your mistakes and you're you're getting that certainty as to you know what you're standing for what you're running for and what you seek to create that was number three <laughs> and um, so number two was you know making sure that you're out there being the source for change that you want to see in your community or wherever it is that you're running for um, and then number one is just start. So don't just take it from me. Here are the stories of my friends, Gabriela, Steele, and Steve, who just got started, who learned by doing, and are changing the world by being the change, not just waiting for the change. And a little bit about my story. So I always tell my story um, by sharing the first time that I found that I was poor. I was here in Southwest Detroit sitting at my um, at home at my kitchen table watching my mom cook dinner for us and she um, was cooking and I asked her for new shoes and she told me that um, she couldn't buy them for me and I asked her mom I said mommy are we poor and she said yeah we're poor you you didn't know that and no I had no idea that we were poor because growing up um, there was always food on my table our lights were always on our heat always worked and it was really later in life that I realized that my mom worked incredibly hard, working every single day to pinch her pennies, to pay the bills. We were so poor that we were able to receive services like WIC um, and other food stamps. So it was really because of policies set in place um, that, that allowed us to receive certain services, um, which, which allowed us to live with dignity. My mom told me, Mika, make sure you go to school, that way you don't have to work as hard as, 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 hard as I do, and that you find independence. Um, so I did that. I got a full ride scholarship to a really great high school in Farmington Hills, 30 minutes away from Detroit. Um, and I couldn't get there though until I started to work at 15 years old to buy my own car to, to get me to school 30 minutes away for me to be able to accomplish the things that I needed to do. But when I got to school, I, I realized that money does exist. There, there is money in the world. As soon as girls turned 16, they would roll into the school in new Hummers or new Bentleys. I remember walking down the hallway and over the PA system, someone saying, somebody lose their coach purse, 
or or their black limited black american express card and that's when i realized that money does exist if people have it um it's it's very it's, it's an abundance for them and and i didn't think it was fair didn't think it was fair that me and my family had struggled so hard um while there were others who who were just who, who had it who, who had money um to, to just throw away um, so I, I actually went to school to study business, to, 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 to find a way to, to make money for me and my family. Went to college, studied business. Um, but when I was in school, I very quickly realized that businesses, corporations, actually do everything that they possibly can to pay us very little. They, they, they do everything that they can to, to not give us the rights that we need, the protections that we need. And that made me really upset, made me really sad to think that I was going to go into a world of business that's going to just use all of its efforts to, to make the most money for the bottom line and not serve our people. While I was in college, thankfully, I had um, my state rep was, was Rashida Tlaib, and she was an incredible woman of color in, in the state house who was constantly standing up to the corporations, who were saying that things are wrong, who were saying that we should, that we should protect our communities, and, and, and who was having wins for us as well. So that was really encouraging, it was really inspiring to see another woman of color from Southwest Detroit standing up to the corporations, knowing that, that what they were doing was wrong and making sure that we were being serviced. And since then, I've been working for nonprofits. I've been working in local politics. I did recently run for office. I, I ran for county commissioner here um, in Wayne County. I ran in the fourth district, which, which covers Southwest Detroit, Lincoln Park, and Melvindale. And I did it because Downriver and, and those communities are becoming the culture shifting, the community shifting to, to, to be one that's, that's very Hispanic, one that's very Latinx, very immigrant heavy. And, and I wanted someone to, to serve them, to, to, to work with them, to make sure that, that we are being serviced in, in the way that we need. Um, I did not plan to run for office during a, a pandemic. And, and I knew that running for office was going to be really hard. I ran against a 20 year incumbent who has a household name. Um, we won election night, but unfortunately came about 1,200 votes short, so on absentee votes. Um, but for me, that's really encouraging because I'm 28 years old, I, I'm an immigrant, I'm a queer woman, I come from a community that's, that's, that's heavily working class, middle class, um, and I got really, really close. We got really, really close to, to winning an election um, that I think would have been a huge, huge um, win for all of us and really shown us that we can be the leaders that we need to be and, and that we can elect people who really care about us. A message to millennials um, so what I have to say to young people out there to millennials like me is that I know that we grew up during a time where the economy wasn't serving us our leadership wasn't serving us our communities unfortunately couldn't understand us um, but but we get us we understand us we got us and I really do believe that it's up to us to run for office it's up to us to be the leaders in the corporations to change them and in, in the financial institutions in in our, our hospitals we are the ones that that it's up to us it's up to us now to, to be the leaders um that we know that we need that we've always needed um i think that we know a struggle we also know a hustle and we also have a lot of care for other people in our community i think that we're a really special group i think the generation coming after us is is, is incredible as well and and they need leaders like us serving them, supporting them, making sure that they are the next leaders serving behind us. And I just wanna make sure to encourage everyone to do whatever you can, whether that be art, whether that be organizing, whether that be working for local politics, to do it and, and, and to do it with other people. We don't have to do this work alone. If anything, we are, we are much stronger when we're working together. So really encourage you to, to find, your, find your clan, find your group, find your people, work together with them, uplift each other, because we are really the leaders that, that are coming up, that, that are taking leadership positions. And, and I think that we are the ones that are gonna be able to make a huge change for our communities. I'm Steel Hughes, I'm a community member, I'm a restorative practitioner, son, husband, I'm a brother, uncle an overall community land. I decided to run because I realized we needed to see more people um, that look like us, you know, not just African Americans, but young folks that cared about the issues that we cared about and wanted to champion. Um, I had a situation um, about four years ago in Greektown where I was arrested, I got arrested for jaywalking. And I reached out to my councilman, I reached out, out to my, my representative, 
and just wanted somebody to help me out because that was my first real brush in with legal trouble. I only had this, I think I got one speeding ticket at that point. And the fact that nobody really got back with me, that really, that didn't really sit well with me. Um, so I took it upon myself to figure out how to get through that, navigate through those. Uh, once I beat those charges, I started doing a lot of community work up at the, up at the Recreation Center with uh, one of my mentors, Devon Buskin where I would help um, bring people into the, from the community who had legal issues. And I would have friends of mine who were attorneys come up there and just give them free advice on pro bono work and things of that such. And just seeing the response I was getting from community members, just doing something as simple as giving them somebody that's a listening ear, somebody that wanted to be there as an assistant, somebody wanted to be there to help with, with, with no drill charge. And that really opened my eyes up to really um, a question of how many other young people went through a situation such as I went through, maybe didn't have the connections or the resources to navigate them with themselves out of it. And how many people had a felony because of that? When I started having those thoughts over and over again, I really just took had to take it seriously. When you want to make a change in the community, you have to be and get involved. And to that point I was I was just being a community member, I was coaching football, but that really wasn't the involvement that I knew I needed. So um, I wanted to get into politics. I wanted to get into the conversations about legislation how to get more funding in our, in our schools, how to get more funding in our youth organizations, how to get more funding around needed resources, housing, education, for resources in the community. And then the more I did my research, realized that nonprofits are wildly effective and not the end all be all and the best way to create change. So I wanted to get into politics to be that example and be that person in the community that can say I have the connection with community members, I have the heart for the, the ch children, person of the city and I want to get to actually doing the work for the people. The only real career that I can find was politics and I really shifted my folks away from corporate America and the politics or community work. Um, I ran for state representative. So when I ran, I, won, I did my research, um, I started looking into the different um, different branches and I believe if you really want to create change, get to be around where the money is. I looked in the state representative because they're the ones that control the purse for the state. So I went in, um, the things I truly really believe in, we need more funding around vocational and skilled trade programs in our school. If you really want to combat the school to prison pipeline and not just say it, you got to really look into the whys behind the behavior. And that's where restorative practices come into the picture. In the last year and a half, I've been working at a high school, getting real familiar with restorative practices and just figuring out different ways we can take the emotional and community the learning initiatives and like the schools. I really wanted to run because I wanted to have that, that opportunity to create that change in those, so in those spaces. When it comes to progressive values, in, in my opinion, those are the only values we need to be champion right now. The old fashioned way, the traditional way, while effective, it's not efficient anymore. That the world is changing. As, as everything that we're used to and accustomed to evolving, so much our political views. When it comes to progressive, we need to be more aggressive towards getting progressive views across. Healthcare needs to be a front focus. Education needs to be a front focus. Community involvement, community engagement, community outlook, community business, nonprofit development, small profit development, that needs to be the focus. Then we can get into um, police reform, what that looks like. The funny the police, while sounds, while sounds crazy, it's a very needed discussion around things that, that we are funding police and responsible, or making them responsible for doing. These are things we need to have a conversation around because as the world evolves, we must also evolve the way we govern it. Um, I'm going to continue to be the same person that I was before I ran. At the end of the day, it's community over politics. It's something that I believe in. So while I may have ran and took a lot of pictures and did a lot of things for social media, I normally do those things on a regular basis. So just continue to be the person that I am. But, you know, um, part, of, part of politics is you win or you lose. But no matter what, as long as you get involved, you're going to win. You're going to create change that you want to see. So um, the woman that won, her name is Mary Cavanaugh. You know, I'm, I'm excited that she offered me an opportunity to, to go up to Lansing and work with us. I'll be over constituent, um, constituent aid as well as um, policy for. And just that's an exciting opportunity. Now I have, I have the opportunity to discuss issues that I care about, not just from the, the office or the person of the position, but my ideas will matter. So my same relationship that I have with the community members and the people that I'm involved with, I'll be able to champion their issues, champion their concerns, and bring those things to Lansing and be able to create changes that we want to see in the community. So I believe as long as you run, you're going to win regardless. I mean, when it comes to just progressives in general, they're starting to get more active. 
Now if I don't do this, I get more active. We're trying to take more notice of them because it's more of them. Talk about Stacey Abrams. You know, she ran for governor and she lost. But it was that loss that really created the change in her, where she, she had to focus on voter suppression. And what she's been able to get accomplished in Georgia, what she's been able to bring to the forefront and flip an entire state, she turned a loss for the governorship into a much bigger opportunity. And that's she did that as a consultant. So that goes to show you that, you know, you don't even necessarily need that title or that, that big boardroom to create the changes. You know, you can do that. Are you the idea and the heart is what creates the change? That's why you get into politics. You have an idea and you have a good heart. You could always gonna have that regardless of what your title is. Just remember who you are and whose you are. So in order to be a leader, it has to be in your heart and in your mind. And regardless, even before you got this position, you always had a great personality and a great heart. You're a good person. So, you know, you, you didn't you didn't have what you wanted when you ran for the first time. So you're making yourself available to other people. And you know, that's what being the change is all about. All right. Hi, my name is Steve Dombrowski. Uh, I'm a resident of Madison Heights, Michigan. Uh, and recently I was voted onto the art board for the city. So that's a good question. Why ones get involved in local politics? I, I would say for the last 10 years, I've been interested in getting involved uh, in government, uh, whether that was city government, state government, national government. To, to be quite honest, I didn't really know where to start. Um, and then from the guidance from a close friend uh, that I went to school with, she recommended that I take a look into different boards that might be open in the city. Uh, I'm a lifelong musician and a lover of the arts. Uh, played guitar since I was five years old. Uh, and what I found was that uh, Madison Heights had two openings for the art board for the city. Um, and I'm extremely passionate of, uh, about the arts and I, I'd love to find different ways to um, amplify the arts throughout the city uh, in, uh, in the school systems, uh, in you know, the, the local community. Uh, to expand. So um, I, I think a big part of it is being able to expand the accessibility uh, to the arts throughout the community. Uh, in the school systems, when we think about music programs, after school music programs, things like that, um, any way that I can help with expanding that in the community is something that I would absolutely love to be a part of. Question, so what's my connection to Harper Woods and then uh, Madison Heights? So I grew up uh, in Harper Woods. I started going to Harper Woods schools uh, in fourth grade, um, so I think I was 10 uh, when I moved to the, the uh, community from uh, Detroit Public Schools. Um, and Harper Woods, what, what was interesting, it was sort of a melting pot. There were a lot of different people uh, from, from uh, different backgrounds, different cultures, different communities, different family lifestyles. Um, and being a smaller community, we're talking uh, about a square mile uh, for Harper Woods, everybody knew one another and uh, conversed with one another. Um, hung out with one another. So we, we were exposed to, to different cultures and um, family lifestyles. Uh, really, I, I was early on um, a, as a kid. So, uh, so I, I love that about Harper Woods. Um, I, I think I was about 26, 27 years old when I left Harper Woods uh, and moved out to you know, Oakland County. Uh, originally it was Royal Oak. Um, I lived there for a couple of years, but I was able to uh, get a house in Madison Heights. And what attracted me so much about Madison Heights is it, it is very similar to Harper Woods, to where it's a melting pot of all types of different communities. Um, so uh, you, you really get a chance to know a lot of different types of people, uh, which I absolutely appreciate. So what are my thoughts on the current political climate? Uh, and then uh, what are my hopes for the future, uh, even my future when it comes to politics. So um, it, it's a tough time. You know, I, I think we're, uh, we live in very divided times right now to where, um, you know, frankly, people don't know what's gonna happen in, in the next 30 days. And then subsequently after that, you know, with, uh, uh, with the election. So I, I think what's important right now is we, we try as hard as we can to find some sort of common ground. The ability to, to have a conversation with somebody, um, to get off of social media, media, to get off of Facebook, that's not where these conversations can grow and um, have any chance of success. Um, I'm sure we can all agree with that. 
Um, we, we have to take these conversations and these concerns about whether you're on the right or the left, uh, your concerns uh, that, that you have, you have to take those conversations um, into your family, into your friends, into your community, um, and, and, and challenge those individuals to, to reach out and want to have a real thought-provoking, fact-filled uh, conversation versus, hey, I'm going to start an argument on Facebook. Uh, so um, I, I think that's where we need to go. Th that's my hope. I, I'm hoping that throughout through all of this chaos that, that we're kind of going through right now, that we learn to sort of extend an arm uh, of uh, uh, some solidarity, I should say, in conversation, um, and uh, we 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 grow together as opposed to just being so uh, so far divided. Um, and as far as my political future is concerned, I, I'd love to continue uh, moving into um, you know more city and, and state uh, government, um, and hopefully to uh, bring people together. If I if I can accomplish anything throughout anything I do in politics or whatever that might be, uh, it would be to just bring people together. So thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and to hit that bell up there for notifications, and um, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Also remember to support me on Patreon, um, and I'm going to link that, uh, put, the, put the link in the description below. So uh, thank you for watching my channel, and this has been um, how to get involved in politics. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe.